Hey guys, Adam from Equip to Endure here for Live Fire Gear, and today we're going to be talking about one of our products, is the 550 Fire Cord, and some of the different applications. This will be an ongoing series of ways you can use 550 Fire Cord to not only add the benefits of what Paracord does for your gear, but also the benefits of having that emergency fire starter for anywhere that you're going. So for this uh, project, we're actually going to take my uh, Wetterlings Large Hunter Axe right here, and I've actually had Paracord wrapped around the shaft here for many years, it does a couple of things. First off, it somewhat protects the wood here if I accidentally miss my target. Nothing you know, stupendous, but it is that extra layer of protection. Gives me a nice hold if I'm choking down on it and using the blade as a knife. And also just another great place to carry some paracord. So we're gonna be wrapping our handle on this. And uh, I chose to do uh, the bright red paracord for the specific reason is I'm gonna start attaching bright red paracord to some of my kit when I'm out with my kids. So they know if there's any red paracord on there, that represents danger, and that's an item that I'm not allowed to touch without supervision. So it's a pretty cool item that I can do, start you know, blazing some of my equipment so they need to stay away, and at the same time, I always have emergency fire starter wherever I go. So for this, you need a knife to uh, cut your paracord. It doesn't have to be a knife this size, this is one I grabbed. You'll need a lighter to sear the ends. You'll need a multi-tool or some kind of pliers. And for added bonus, we're going to try a new experiment. I'm actually throwing a fire steel in here, and we'll explain what we're going to do with that here in a few seconds. So we'll be right back. So the first thing, guys, is we're going to talk a little safety. We are working on an edged item. This axe is very sharp. Eh, it could stand to be a little sharper. But what we're going to do is we're going to take some of this Gorilla Tape, and we're going to uh, put some tape over the blade, especially the edges. So while we're working this around, if we're not paying attention to the edge, we're not going to get, you know, hurt by it. So what I do with that is just throw that on there and I'm going to push this here and then push that there. I try not to put as much tape as I can without going all the way back so it's easier to move. This uh, sharp edge is protected and once I'm done with the tape, take it off, put some WD-40 off, get all the, the stickiness off the edge. It's something that you don't want to leave on there for very long. So if this is a project that you're not going to start and complete within the 15 minute period it takes, do not leave your axe like this. Again, do not leave your axe like this. So right. the concept here is we're going to take our fire cord, we're going to take it out of the package here. And uh, for those of you guys who aren't familiar with it, it's normal 550 cord with the extra eighth strand, which is our fire starting fire core strand. You take this out, you fluff it up a little bit, it catches a spark, it's waterproof, lasts forever, and it's always there. But the cool thing about it is this, this 550 cord still has the same properties as normal 550 cord. You can take the 550 pound test. It is a mil spec grade cord. We have our seven inner strands and of course our fire strand and our outer sheath. So even when you pull out this fire core center in case you need to start a fire with it, you still have your core to use. All right, this project can be kind of a self-contained fire kit. So I have a larger diameter fire steel right now. This is kind of the only one I could find that could serve this purpose. I was thinking about throwing it right here when I wrap the axe handle. So not only is this always going to be there to take out and I have a tinder, I have ignition source, and I can use the axe in an emergency as a striker to this ferro rod. So now this is a new experiment, guys. I've never done anything like this before, especially with a thick uh, fire steel like this. I chose a thick one because I thought that the fire steel itself is probably going to be absorbing a lot of shock and might break. So I wanted something that's big enough, even if it was broken, I could still use it to, to, to start a fire. Um, so that was one idea, and we'll see how it works. It may work pretty well, or I may unwrap it. Um, I didn't want to put it there because if I miss, I'm definitely going to break it. And I don't want to really put it here because that's going to cause some unnecessary torque as well. And I feel I'm right-handed, so if there's cord right there and I'm grabbing it like that, it's going to be more ergonomic to how my hand's going to hold the axe. Because I do use this axe a lot in this position when I'm out in the field. So that's the one little extra that we're going to throw on there. So the wrap that we're going to use is going to be a simple, simple wrap. We're going to start low and wrap high. The reason I'm going to do that is this is a more consistent thickness. The wrap of the handle is going to be nice and tight. As the handle moves up here, because of the inconsistent thickness here as it, as it changes, you tend to get a little froggy around here where, where the, the wrap wants to space out and everything. Another thing to be uh, concerned about too is that paracord is dynamic. It's not static. It's going to stretch out a little bit. If there's temperature changes, it can expand and contract. So that might cause you to, to loosen up a little bit as well. But what we're going to do, though, is basically we're going to start a simple loop like this. So when we're done wrapping this all the way up, there'll be a loop that's exposed right here that we can put our end through. 
So once that's there, we'll pull this other cord. This will cinch down on itself, and we'll show you this as we do it. And then your kit is set up. And then I have an ax where if I just grab this, not only do I have a cutting tool, but I also have rope, and I have a fire starting device all in one kit, which is pretty cool. All right, so right now we're going to start and make sure you guys keep uh, tabs on where your, co your cord is. You, if you don't pay attention to it, it'll, it'll uh, knot up on you with the quickness. I probably want the wrap to start right about here. I don't want the wrap to touch any of these areas. This part still needs to be smooth. You don't want to have your whole axe handle uh, covered. The reason being is when you have your grip on this axe, you do want to loosen one hand so the, the axe head will kick a certain way when you're splitting. You don't want to have it really tight. This is made to you know, be smooth in your hand like that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find a good position for our uh, fire steel. And I'm thinking a little bit higher, maybe be a little better, but you know what the best, the good thing about this, if it doesn't work out, we can always change it up there. I'm going to put a lot of extra up there just so when I start pulling this tight, um, we'll be pretty cool with that. All right, so there we go. And that's probably where I want it. So I'm going to start wrapping it here. And then once I'm ready to put that on there, I'll put that on there. So we're just going to grab this like so. And with the uncut piece, you guys see why that is important that I, that I uh, covered that ax head up. All right, so that's gonna look at our first loop. And the neater everything can be, the better. We're actually gonna try to position the seam to the, to the spine here when we start to get a little tighter. Right now it's nice and loose. So about three wraps into this, you can start to see how it's gonna take form. We'll start pushing this back here a little bit. So right where I wanted to get it. Because remember, the cord itself is going to bulge a little bit. All right. The tighter, the better. So just take your time and slowly wrap this guy up. At about five or six wraps, the friction on the, the shaft should be enough to hold it, as you guys can see. But we're going to really put some pressure on it now. All right, so that's right here, guys. We're going to start to push this up a little bit. Just gonna make it tighter. All right. So at this point, all right. So I might need to back up a little bit. Got a good spot for that fire steel to go now. And a lot of this is, you know, trial and error. You try to do one thing and see where it's working, and then uh, you go back and repeat. So. The difficult part right here at first is going to be able to put enough pressure on that fire steel where it's not going to want to run away on you. So sometimes I want to, you can't see me under the table, but I'm throwing the cord under my foot so I can keep some tension on this. Remember, I'm coming up here and cleaning up the, a little bit. You know what? I think that's going to be good. A little looks more exposed than I thought there, but you know, looking at that, I might be able to stuff some more little items under there. Now remember, guys, if you guys are out in the field and you're using this axe a lot and that starts to be some issues with it unraveling or whatever, that's fine. You can stop what you're doing, wrap it back up, or unravel it, throw it in your pocket. The idea here is just to pack this kit in different configurations so no matter what the situation is, you always have that. All right, so there we go, guys. So at this point, we've got a pretty good wrap. Feels pretty tight. It doesn't feel too intrusive. You know, I've got big hands, so it's not going to be a, a big issue for me to grab up there and still do. And this probably would be better with, a, you know, somewhat of a smaller fire steel, but as of right now, the experiment's working pretty well, so we're going to keep going. And the next part, and this is more of a challenging section, is we're going to take our cord, we're going to cut out where we, where we don't need it anymore. And I'll make sure you guys measure what you need. You know, 550 fire cord works just like normal cord. It's not a problem to burn it. Of course, it's going to burn a little bit different. You guys see a little ranger band on this lighter. So, same thing like you do normal paracord. I'm going to seal that edge. 
it's just going to burn a little bit better because of the cord. But we still push it out. And all right, guys. So after we got everything kind of cleaned up, what's going to happen is we're going to put a knot in this rope, and we want that knot to kind of end right here. And what's going to happen is we start to pull this loop down. It's going to cinch up on that knot. It's going to lock it into place. But at the same time, it's going to be easy. All we have to do is snip this to unravel it or even loose it up and push this up enough to get it unraveled. But the, the challenging part is we, we kind of want that knot to fall down right where that loop is. So we take it back a little bit. We need enough in there to get that knot into place. And, you know, this might take a little practice. Oops, see that knot? And the knot's roll all over the place, especially paracord. Paracord is not the, the best material to knot. Let me see that. It's not bad. Remember, this is going to stretch too. So even though we put the knot here, once we start pulling this, the knot's going to come over here and that can loosen up the product as well. And you can do a double knot or, or whatever, whatever meets your sensibilities. I mean, there's some better knot tires out there than me. For all you Navy guys out there, you guys are probably rock stars with the knots. And that'll do it. And so then we just slide that through there. Now, th this is one of the, the more challenging parts because you got to slowly grab this other cord and start to pull that out. So what you want to do is just hold on to the rope and just slowly pull it. Now, sometimes it'll go fast, so you want to be careful. See that right there? You don't want to pull it out too quick. All right. So... A couple things you can do there, put the blade between your feet and give it a nice tug or whatever. So you guys can see this is a little loose, don't really want that that loose. What you could do for that is actually come back in here and pull the other side of the cord up a little bit. So now I'm pu pulling the other side down here and getting that tight. You guys see that? So this side is getting tighter. That's all you do. Come back in here. That's much tighter down there. Come back, make sure this is nice and tight. So you do have this one little anomaly there, but when you're working with, a, you know, wrapping on an inconsistent plane and you have an item in there like that, that's going to happen. But shoring up both sides is going to be important. So I'm just Grabbing it, pull a little bit. There we go. And then, once I got that, I come back for this other side. Pull that other piece back. And keep on working that until you get to a level where that feels pretty good. So, at this point, you got a couple things that you can do. Of course, we can cut this right here and, and you know, make that a little bit prettier. Some people like big, big old ugly knots there. I probably would have done a smaller knot. Just for the purposes of the video, I kind of want to show you guys what we're doing. All right, so we'll come in here just like normal paracord, light it a little bit, get it nice and melted. Remember that stuff's like liquid napalm, guys, and I just press it with my lighter. That way it seals all the stuff around there. And the same thing down here. Make sure you get that to where you want it to be. Give a little bit extra. And the same thing. And don't worry guys, the fire cord in here, it will burn like a candle, but you know, you want to agitate that material. So there's a fire cord lighting on fire, but it doesn't take nothing to push that out. And that cools off pretty fast. And then you still got your leftover scrap of, uh, of your fire cord. Pull that out and start a fire with that. We're not going to do that inside right now, but make sure to clean up your pieces. The wife doesn't like when I leave little fuzzy, you know, inner cord clippings like this laying around. That's that's a way to get in trouble, guys. And then the uh, we have some fire cord left over. Probably, let me see. Little, little less than six feet um, left over. So, I mean, this is probably a good 20 foot amount of cord. With your inner inner core, that's quite a bit of rope to have if you need it. All in a self-contained kit. We're gonna make sure that we take our tape off. We don't want to be using even residue all over our blade. Nobody likes that. See like this, that's the problem. If you leave it on there too long, 
you'll get little stuff like that that you want to make sure is not on the edge of your knife or the edge of your axe. So get that off. And there we have it, guys. We have a very cool kit, 20 feet of uh, fire cord. I think that'll, that'll burn probably an hour and 45 minutes or so, using it little sections by little sections um, to start a fire. That's a lot of fire starting material. You have uh, fire steel in there. Probably wiggle this in and out if I wanted to. I wouldn't do that though because you know once you pull it out, it's gonna be hard to, to put it back in. Um, this is kind of emergency purposes only. It'd probably be better to get a less intrusive fire steel than the one that's you know a quarter inch thick. Uh, would work really well. But I think that's a cool idea. I've been having that idea for a while now, and I thought I'd throw that on there. I've, I've unwrapped my axe. I've had a, a wrap on this for a while now. I usually only do it about this length, but before because of the fire steel, I wanted to go down a little further, and it worked out pretty good. Good. You guys saw how I tighten up both ends, so it caused it not to slip. And there's gonna be some anomalies. This isn't gonna last forever. You're gonna have to rewrap this eventually. But you know, if I'm in a pinch or whatever, if I'm out you know chopping wood and I get lost in the woods or whatever. Now I know I have a piece of uh, fire kit built into my axe wherever I go. So pretty cool stuff. All right, guys. Well, that's just a quick tutorial. Let me know what you guys think. Leave in a comment below. And make sure you guys go check out Live Fire Gear at livefiregear.com. And uh, pick up some fire cord today. Tons of uses. And we like to hear your uses as well. And don't forget to check me out over at equiptoendore.com. And we'll see you here real soon. You guys take care, be safe, and remember, if you're not always prepared, you're never prepared. Thanks. Please.